Hey guys, this is a quick video on the sandwich theorem or the squeeze theorem, and then we're going to use that to just uh, evaluate a couple of basic trig limits. So the idea behind the squeeze theorem or the sandwich theorem is uh, pretty simple. So you have, say, like these two functions. So I'll call this function g of x, and then let me make this other function. So I'll make this one. So I'll say this one is h of x. And then let's say that you have this other function kind of just running right through it. So we'll call this one f of x. So squeeze theorem, um, it, the, you've got a function that is squeezed between two other functions. And so let's pretend also that this point right here, this is the point C. So if you're trying to figure out what is the limit of f of x, well, if you know what g of x and h of x are, and you know the limit of those two, then f of x is going to be the same thing. So let, let me actually just show you the, the theorem now, so I think this will make more sense. So the standard theorem, or squeeze theorem, says suppose that you have f of x between h of x and g of x, so that's exactly what I drew. So this is for all x within some interval. Then if the limit of, the, if the limit as h of x, yeah. If the limit as x approaches c of h of x is equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x and all that equals l, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c will also be l. So that makes a lot of sense when you see kind of the, the visual that goes with it. And so that's kind of the um, idea. So one place where we could use this, here's a, a really typical example that comes up with this. So let's suppose that I know f of x is between these two functions and I want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. Well, then what you want to do is you want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the, the outer two functions. So if I start with this one, so this is uh, nice and straightforward, so I can just go ahead and evaluate this and by plugging in my 0, so that equals 3. And then we're going to prove this in a second. Um, so I'm actually just going to use this fact for now. So I can also um, evaluate this, and I can also plug in just 0 for cosine of x to, to solve this. So this is 3 of cosine of 0, so this will also equal 3. So this is exactly what you're looking for. The two values are the same. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of that function that is squeezed between them, that will also be 0. Oops, sorry, not 0, 3. OK. So that's the idea. And so one place that this really typically comes up actually is with trig functions. The reason why that is it actually has to do with a fact that you may or may not remember from trigonometry. So these are two facts that you would have learned in trigonometry. Like I said, you, you might have forgotten them, so I just wanted to really briefly remind you. So these are just inequalities um, that are just properties of these two functions. And I've just drawn a little sketch for you just so you can kind of see how these actually look. So we can actually use these facts then to help us establish why the limits of these two functions are what they are. So starting with the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x, so if I had no idea how to actually approach this, then what I would do is I would actually use that little helpful fact that I just showed you. So I would say, oh, hey, I know this. And then I would say, and then I, I would say, oh, and then the limit of the absolute value of x is going to be the same thing as the limit uh, as x approaches 0 of the negative absolute value of x, so all of that equals 0. And you can get that. You, there's there's several different ways that you can do that. Um, we're just going to take it for granted off the, the graph that I'm going to pull that off of that this equals 0. So therefore, by the squeeze theorem um, or the sandwich theorem, once I heard it called sandwiches theorem, which I thought was really great, actually. I kind of wish now it was the sandwiches theorem. <laughs> um, so I've got this will equal 0. And I think a lot of people really take this for granted because um, they just think, oh, I can just plug 0 into x. But if you think about it, we don't have a limit law that tells us that we can just explicitly do that. So we do need a justification for why this does equal 0. And so this is just a really quick way to understand why it, why it does equal 0. OK, now, if I want to use this, the squeeze theorem here to prove this limit, so the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x. So just notice that 
my helpful fact, it is actually for one minus cosine of x. So this is actually the, the way that I'm, I'm gonna approach this. So I'm gonna have that the negative absolute value of x is less than or equal to one minus cosine of x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x. So I'm gonna start here. So once again, so I know that the limit as x approaches zero of the negative absolute value of x is the same thing as x approaches zero of the absolute value of x, so all of that equals zero. So what that tells me then is that the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine of x, so by this, the squeeze theorem, this must equal zero. Okay, so now here's where I can do a little bit of algebraic trickery to make this solid. So if I wanted to approach this in a slightly different way, so I could actually break this piece up into two limits using my limit laws. So I could say this is the, the limit as x approaches zero of one minus the limit as x approaches zero of the cosine of x. And I know that that's supposed to equal zero. Okay, so let me clear just a little space. So evaluating this one more time, so the, the limit of any constant is just gonna be the, the constant itself. So this will mean that this minus the limit as x approaches zero of the cosine of x equals zero. And now I can just do a little bit of algebra on this. So I can subtract the one from each side to get that the negative limit as x approaches zero of the cosine of x will equal negative one. Divide both sides by negative one, therefore we can conclude that the limit as x approaches zero of the cosine of x will actually equal one. So I know that seems probably a little bit like overkill in some ways, but if you think about it, anytime we talk about something in math, we have to really understand why it works the way that it does. And we don't have a limit law that tells us that we can just plug in the number for trig functions. So we do wanna just know that there is some sort of justification behind that and it happens to be the squeeze theorem. So that is it for this particular lesson. And I do have some more trig limits if you're looking for those. So hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.